Welcome back. I'm here with Sally Theobald. She's a professor at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Thank you so much for joining me. Can you tell me what does a resilient and responsive health system mean for you? Sure. A resilient and responsive health system is one that's inclusive and one that is gender equitable. So by that I mean one that responds to the needs, the priorities of women and men and people of other genders across the life cycle. We change, we have different experiences and different needs through time. A resilient and responsive health system is also one that values, supports and acknowledges people working in healthcare at all levels of the health system, including the frequently underpaid and under-recognised, close to community providers such as community health workers, and also healthcare that takes place in households, in communities, all over the world and again, very often not recognised within the healthcare system and very often carried out by women and girls and too much invisibilised. So it means recognising all of that care. Yeah, that's something I never would have thought really falls into healthcare, the care that uh, takes place at home. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on that specifically? Well, if you look at people's healthcare seeking trajectories, so let's look, for example, around neglected tropical diseases, which is something we work on in Countdown, that you might have multiple symptoms. It's likely that at first there will be discussion and self-care at home, and that would be care being looked after within the household. You might then go to a community health worker. You might get advice from a community support mechanism or a neighbor. You might go and visit an informal provider, which is key in Bangladesh, very pluralistic society, a very pluralistic set of healthcare providers. So the pathways that people take to seek care are complex they go over and through time and they start in the household. They start with a mum looking after a baby or a husband or a grandma. And we're often seeing that sometimes girls are taken out of school to continue with caring responsibilities. So healthcare systems, to me, if they're truly responsive and resilient, it's recognizing that a lot of care takes place at that level. What actions do you think must be taken to make health systems more resilient and more responsive? Well, there's lots. It's hard to know where to start, and it, there's been brilliant sets of discussions at this conference around that. One of the areas I believe we don't have enough action on is fragile and conflict-affected states. There's a lot of healthcare issues, challenges, vulnerabilities, and in Rebuild we focus on healthcare in fragile and conflict-affected and post-conflict contexts looking at how do you rebuild health systems. The world is a fragile place, right? There is war, there is uncertainty, there is migration. I heard a fact that one in seven of us globally are migrants. So we need to look at healthcare systems that respond to the realities of fragile contexts, that respond to the multiple and intersecting needs of migrants and that build gender and equitable processes and transformatory options for change. And we talked about health, um, community health workers and close to community providers. So these are the, the people providing care at the community level. They're a critical interface between households, individuals and the health system. So often in very rural, neglected, marginalised communities, they are the face of the healthcare system. So it's about supporting them because they're juggling so many balls, dealing with a whole myriad of different issues. They need our recognition, our support, and their views also need to feed up into health systems to make them more responsive. You've already talked a lot about this intersectional um, approach to resilient and responsive health systems. Is there anything more you want to add on, on that note specifically? How do we improve those intersection points? Well, I've just come out of a fantastic plenary on intersectionality, so I'm buzzing with ideas about it. I mean, I think what is clear is intersectionality is not just looking at multiple 
axes of disadvantage and adding them together and stirring. It's about looking at how power shapes that. And it's also bringing ourselves as researchers, as poly policy analysts or practitioners really into the equation. We have our own identities, our own intersectionalities. We have to be reflexive and acknowledge those. But ultimately, intersectionality is about acknowledging how power can shape experiences and what do we do about that to promote social justice and as I've just said I think we need to focus on fragile and conflict affected societies we have to promote gender equity and we have to support close to community providers as critical interfaces between health systems and communities these issues are challenging we need to continue the conversation and i'm delighted to be part of the hosting team for health systems global in 2018 where we can keep these conversations and experience sharing alive so see you in liverpool in 2018.